So what's good, family? Listen, we back with another video and trying to figure out what Russia got going on that could shock the world. Uh, you know, that could be anything as of right now these days, but let's check it out. Russia is popular on the internet, but it's mostly just stereotypes. But you see, this country is more than just vodka and courageous people who would even fight with bears. From the most radioactive lake in the world to a child who allegedly came from Mars, here are 20 unsettling discoveries in Russia nobody can explain. Number 20. The most polluted spot in the world. If I ask you to guess what the most polluted and radioactive spot in the world is, Chernobyl. what would you guess? Spoiler alert, it's not Chernobyl. Deep within the Ural Mountains of Russia, like <laughs> that was clearly my guess. Karache is among the most beautiful sites in the world. However, this eerie lake is known as the most dangerous spot on the planet. Even standing near this lake is lethal. But just how did this lake become the most polluted and dangerous spot on Earth? It all started in the 1940s. Mayak, a nuclear establishment producing plutonium, used the lake as a dumping ground for radioactive waste. This lasted from 1951 to 1953. The Mayak Jeez. operated in absolute secrecy, and it was too late to stop them when their illicit activities were revealed. Continuous dumping made the lake a deadly hazard. By 19 And y'all think we don't think that this, this type of stuff is happening today? You really believe that this type of stuff, it just hasn't been revealed to us yet. 90, when the existence of Mayak was finally acknowledged, the surrounding region had already paid a heavy price. The residents of the Chelyabinsk area, located near the lake, suffered significantly from health issues, including a marked increase in cancer, birth defects, and leukemia cases. The Techa River, which provided water to nearby communities, became heavily contaminated, leading to widespread radiation sickness. One of the most chilling aspects of Lake Karachay's pollution is the lethal level of radioactivity it harbored. Reports from 1990 indicated that spending just an hour on its shore could deliver a fatal dose of radiation. This wow. extreme danger led to decisive action. The lake was eventually filled with concrete and other materials to contain the radioactive sediment. Although this measure mitigated the immediate threat, concerns remain about the long-term environmental impact and the potential for radiation to disperse beyond the lake bed. Luckily, a $263 million project to clear up the mess in Lake Karache had some success. However, the damage done in just several years could remain for years to come. In fact, even if Lake Karache disappears, the land surrounding it will continue to be a hazard. Before we go on, mm. like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. Elephant's Foot Since we're already on the topic of radioactivity, here's another example found in Russia. This one might already be familiar to some of you. This unknown mass is the elephant's foot. In the Chernobyl nuclear disaster of 1986, this unique and deadly formation was discovered within the ruins of Reactor 4. This mass was a solidified mixture of various materials, including nuclear fuel, sand, concrete, and other substances that had melted through the reactor's core and solidified in the facility's basement. The formation of the elephant's foot began shortly after the Chernobyl disaster. The core meltdown caused the zirconium coating of the control rods to melt, leading to a mixture of hot metal and uranium dioxide pellets. This combination then melted through parts of the reactor vessel, incorporating various materials along the way. The resulting hot radioactive lava flowed through the building, eventually ending up in the basement and forming the elephant's foot. Today, this is the most lethal thing found in Chernobyl. At the time of its discovery, the elephant's foot was extremely dangerous due to its high radioactivity. Initial measurements indicated radioactivity levels around 8,000 to 10,000 Brentgen per hour, making it lethal within a short exposure period. Five minutes near the mass could deliver a fatal dose of radiation. Over time, the radiation intensity has decreased, but it still remains hazardous. Number 18. Y'all see that, right? And what do we always say? History is doomed to repeat itself. Tell you, it just hasn't been revealed what they're doing yet. And it's not necessarily just Russia. It can be anywhere. A dead Buddhist who walks around at night. Born in 1852 in Buryatia, Russia, Dashi Forjo Atigalov was a revered Buddhist lama who lived a spiritual life in Tsarist Russia before the Bolshevik Revolution. 
He became the 12th Pandito Combo Lama and was actively involved in Buddhist affairs until he died in 1927. However, it seems that death wouldn't stop his legacy. In 1927, he reportedly told his fellow monks that it was time for him to die and entered into a meditative state, the lotus position, and passed away. His final wish was to be buried in the position he died in. Astonishingly, when his remains were examined in 1955 and again in 1973, they showed no signs of decay, a condition that remained even when his body was exhumed in 2002. The preservation of his body was so profound that it was compared to the condition of someone who had died just 36 hours prior. This led to speculations ranging from natural mummification to the belief that he was in a state of hibernation or nirvana, but that's not the end of it. You see, several years after his death, other Buddhists claimed that he was supposedly moving inside the palace where his remains are kept. There were even images of the Buddhist allegedly moving around. These claims have sparked various interpretations and discussions, from spiritual insights to mere dismissals as optical illusions or misinterpretations. However, many believe that a Tigalov spirituality transcends the afterlife. Hence, he continues to profess his faith through apparitions, despite being long dead. Number 17. Bunker 42 You're looking at Bunker 42. This seemingly dystopian place is a historical site located in Moscow, Russia. As its name suggests, this place used to be a secret military complex, originally built as a response to the early threats of nuclear war with the United States during the Cold War era. The construction of Bunker 42 started in 1951. The bunker is situated a staggering 213 feet below ground and spans an area of about 75,000 square feet. This underground complex was built using techniques similar to those used in constructing the Moscow Metro and is connected to it by two tunnels. The facility- I always thought about that. How far below do you need to be to be able to survive an attack? You know, how far do you need to initially be down and start to build to give yourself a good buffer, as well as building a solid bunker that could withstand a blast or anything like that. So I've always thought that toast. To hear them say that number, I wonder what what feet they did to today for their bunkers. That one was obviously 200 and something feet, but interesting. He operated as an emergency command post headquarters and was equipped with everything necessary to sustain life for a significant period during a nuclear attack. This included food, fuel, an air recycling system, and two artisan wells for clean drinking water. During the day, Bunker 42 could accommodate approximately 600 people living and working wow. there for up to 30 days without outside assistance. In the 1960s, it was fully equipped to continue functioning in the event of a nuclear attack. Staff members at the facility were rotated every 24 hours to maintain alertness and prevent combat anxiety. With a fading threat of nuclear war and the economic challenges in the Soviet Union, the bunker fell into disuse and was eventually abandoned in the 1990s. In 2006, it was bought by a private company, Novik Service, for 65 million rubles and transformed into a museum. The bunker now serves as an educational and entertainment complex, offering visitors a glimpse into the tense atmosphere of the Cold War. If you're a history buff who likes spectating historical places in real life, then you might want to add this to your bucket list. Number 16. A Monument to Enema This is more bizarre than unsettling, but I believe this deserves to be mentioned. If you were to look at this statue, what do you think is being portrayed? Any guesses? This is the Monument to Enemas, a humorous sculpture at the Mashak Aquatherm Spa in Russia. Unveiled in 2008, this bronze monument depicts three cherubs carrying an enema, the monument's design was inspired by the Renaissance painter Sandro Botticelli, particularly his classic painting Venus and Mars. The artist, Svetlana Abakova, used this classic inspiration to tackle the subject with a blend of humor and irony, reflecting on the unpleasant nature of enemas, but portraying it lightheartedly. Now I can't think of anywhere else you'd find a similar sculpture. Number 15. <laughs> That's sick, bro. That's... Somebody got a sick sense of humor, man. Are you kidding? Well, I was thinking about the little thing you squish and they stick into the kid's nose. It remind me of that, the, the little suction thing everybody does when a kid got a little nasty nose. I was thinking about that, but 
And then to mix that and then the thought of an enema. Uh, yeah, no thank you. Ah, sick, sick human being. The Dancing Forest. The Dancing Forest in Russia, also known as the Curonian Spit, is a forest unlike any other. What makes this place unique is the oddly shaped pine trees, which appear to be contorted into various unusual forms such as rings, hearts, and spirals. The exact cause behind the peculiar formation of these trees remains a mystery. Several theories have been proposed to explain this phenomenon. Some scientists believe that a combination of factors, including the strong winds in the area, unstable soil composition, and the specific genetic characteristics of the trees might be responsible for their strange shapes. Another theory suggests that the presence of underground water sources or even seismic activities could be influencing the tree growth patterns. The activity of the caterpillar of Ryacionia booleana has also been cited as a possible cause for the distortion of the trees. Beyond the scientific explanation, the dancing forest is steeped in local folklore and myths. One popular legend describes the forest as a battleground between good and evil, with the twisted trees representing the contorted bodies of fallen warriors. Other folklore suggests the presence of witches and sorcerer spirits in the forest, where they're said to have gathered for sinister rituals. No wonder that many people feel creeped out around this forest. Number 14. Batagaika Crater Discovered in the 1960s, the Batagaika Crater has aptly been referred to as the gateway to hell, or the doorway to the underworld. This crater is a massive and growing geological formation located in Siberia's permafrost, and it shows no sign of stopping. It now covers about 200 acres, stretching two-thirds of a mile in length and Jeez. reaching depths of 164 feet. The formation of this crater is a result of permafrost thaw, a process accelerated by climate change. Initially, the Batagaika Crater formed when the deforestation in the area during the Soviet era altered the thermal equilibrium of the surrounding permafrost landscape. The lack of a vegetation canopy allowed more thermal energy from the sun to thaw the permafrost, forming a downslope gully. This process of permafrost thawing has resulted in the ground subsiding and forming a significant depression in the landscape. As scary as its growth is, it reveals important paleontological information including fossils from the last ice age, and possibly older. In 2018, the remains of an extinct baby horse with well-preserved skin, hair, tail, and hooves were discovered in the crater. This specimen provided the oldest sample of liquid blood ever found. Hmm. Number 13. Yakutsk Would you be able to live in a place where temperatures can drop to negative 40 degrees Absolutely Fahrenheit in not. winter? Yakutsk is one of the coldest cities in the world. So if you think you can endure harsh winters, just wait until you experience one in this Russian city. To survive in this place, thick furs are needed. And no, three layers of clothing won't be enough. Special housing designs are required, too. Here, houses are often built on stilts to prevent thawing permafrost from causing them to sink. But despite mm. the extreme cold, life in Yakutsk includes access to modern amenities like movie theaters, restaurants, and a functioning public transportation system. I would never leave the house. For what? <laughs> no. Can you imagine a DoorDash or Uber Eats driver trying to deliver something here? That's the only way I would receive my stuff. I'm never leaving the house in this place. However, residents must limit their outdoor exposure to exactly. avoid frostbite and navigate conditions where car batteries can freeze and fish are sold in frozen form at open air markets. The city is enveloped in a thick fog, adding markets. to its otherworldly feel. But he said open air markets. I'm thinking that means, and y'all tell me if I'm wrong, but the stuff don't need to be inside of a freezer or nothing. You can just sit it outside and it stay frozen and people come through, see it, buy it, and take it back home. You know what I mean? It's no freezer needed. You just use the outside air. Why would people endure such a harsh environment? Well... Yeah people would have moved away from this city if there was no means to make money here. You see, the region's wealth in diamonds and natural gas is a significant factor for people choosing to live in such harsh conditions. Number 12. Russia's Death Valley Russia's Death Valley, located in the Kamchatka Peninsula, is a mysterious and perilous place known for its numerous animal corpses. Yes, you heard that right. In fact, this place is among the most haunted locations in Russia that even most locals avoid. Let's say it's a mixture of supernatural and logical reasons. For one, 
Why would people go to a place where several animals have already died over the years? Some believe that, just as its name suggests, this place is simply cursed with death. The Valley of Death stretches about 1.24 miles and is about 1,640 feet. Vladimir Leonov and Der Yagin first discovered this area. They found the remains of various animals, including bears, which appeared to have died suddenly and in good health. The area is notorious for causing dizziness and headaches among visitors, which has led to speculation about toxic gases like sulfur dioxide, carbon sulfide, or hydrogen sulfide being present. Another theory suggests carbon dioxide might be responsible, similar to the 1986 Lake Neos disaster. The valley continues to attract and be fatal to animals, despite the danger it presents. The exact cause of these phenomena remains unknown, and it's advised not to visit this area due to its lethal nature. Number 11. The Devil's Cemetery Now here's another unsettling location in Russia, the Devil's Cemetery. But well, this isn't really a cemetery. Just like Death Valley, this region found in the Krasnoyarsk region, near the Valley of Kova, is characterized by its lack of vegetation, charred tree branches, and an absence of animal life. People who have ventured into this meadow have reported experiencing unexplainable headaches and a sense of anxiety. The eerie nature of this place is often attributed to the impact of the Tunguska meteorite, which some believe has left a ruinous energy in the area. Through the years, there have been accounts of numerous disappearances in this place. Between 1980 and 1990, about 75 people who set out to find the meadow perished in the taiga and three organized groups vanished without a trace. Equipment malfunction and navigational difficulties have been reported by those who approach the meadow, adding to the mystique of the location. One hypothesis for the strange occurrences in the Devil's Cemetery is the possible emission of toxic gases, such as carbon monoxide from underground coal fires, which could be poisonous to living organisms. However, this theory does not fully explain the mysterious equipment failures with the disappearance of maps experienced by some of the explorers. Despite various research efforts and expeditions, the secrets of the Devil's Cemetery remain largely unresolved. Number 10. The Shigir Idol Now enough about creepy places, and let's talk about one of the creepiest statues found in Russia. This is the Shigir Idol. Found in 1890 in a peat bog near Yekaterinburg in the Ural Mountains of Russia, it's the world's oldest known wood sculpture, dating back approximately 12,000 years to the end of the last ice age, making it significantly older than Stonehenge and the Egyptian pyramids. Originally standing at an estimated height of over 5 meters, the Shigir Idol was found in fragments and has been reconstructed multiple times. The most notable reconstruction by archaeologist Vladimir Tolmachev suggested that the idol originally measured 5.3 meters in height. However, some fragments have been lost, leaving only Tolmachev's drawings for reference. The sculpture is carved from larch wood and was created using stone tools. Intriguingly, the tree from which it was made was at least 159 years old when it was felled. The Shigir idol features a human-like face at the top, with several other faces visible at various points along its length, resembling a totem pole. It's adorned with geometric motifs, including zigzag lines, which are thought to have had significant ceremonial and symbolic meanings. These patterns are con- I get everything they're trying to tell me about this thing, but something about it just doesn't feel right. I get a bad vibe from it, you know? And they can tell you all the different things about it. It's just to me, man, I don't know, I get a bad, I like, I never would want to be in its presence or something. I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Sometimes it's just a feeling, it's a gut feeling, and I'm going to listen to mine. Something just ain't right about this thing. Consistent with late Paleolithic and early Mesolithic art, there have been various interpretations of the idol's carvings, from representing a creation myth, serving as a navigational aid or map, to depicting mythological creatures or forest spirits. The idol's significance in prehistoric art is profound, as it challenges previous beliefs about complexity and age of ritual art. Number 9. Big Hole in Siberia In the remote expanses of Siberia, a series of massive craters have emerged. These craters appear seemingly out of nowhere. The formation of these craters is attributed primarily to the build-up and explosive release of gases, most notably methane within the tundra. 
Researchers have observed that these explosions occur following a rapid accumulation of pressure, a process that can take as little as three to five years. When the pressure becomes unsustainable, the land erupts, casting vast amounts of Earth into the air, sometimes enough to fill multiple Olympic-sized swimming pools. Jeez. The impact of these craters is not just geological, but also societal. The Siberian tundra, where these craters have been appearing, is a region with significant oil drilling activity and indigenous communities. The volatile nature of these explosions poses threats to both industrial infrastructure and the local communities. To better understand and potentially predict these phenomena, scientists have developed algorithms using satellite data analysis. This approach has already identified existing craters and may have uncovered previously unknown ones. However, the challenge remains in predicting future occurrences, as the surface-level data does not provide insights into the subsurface processes leading to crater formation. Number 8. Archime Archime, often referred to as Russia's Stonehenge, is a remarkable archaeological site discovered in 1987 in the southern Urals. This ancient fortified settlement is believed to have been constructed between 2000 to 3000 BC. It features two concentric circular walls, an outer defensive wall, and a moat about 160 meters in diameter. Its design includes four gates that align precisely with the cardinal points, and about 35 houses adjoin the outer wall, revealing a well-planned urban layout. What's more, this structure also boasts a sophisticated water distribution system, tunnels for excess water removal, mines, metallic objects, pottery, ritualistic remains, utensils, and furnaces. To this day, however, Archim is shrouded in mystery. Archim has also been the subject of various interpretations and ideologies among different religions and cultural groups. Some view it as a national and spiritual shrine of Russia, and a model for a new spiritual civilization in harmony with the universe. This has led to ongoing debates about its role and significance in history. Number seven. Abandon I mean, at this point, you got to preserve it, though. You got to preserve it. Like, you don't know what significant it could have, a significance it could have. You don't know anything about it other than the assumptions that have been made already. I just think you should preserve it until we can reveal what it actually means. It may answer a lot of questions that we have about the past. Or at least in that area, it could. And in Mark's generator. No, you're not looking at a bizarre abandoned TV show set. You're not looking at a CGI creation either. It might seem bizarre, but these structures are located at the High Voltage Research Center outside the town of Istra, mm. about 25 miles west of Moscow. But what exactly are these structures? Well, they're abandoned Marx generators. Constructed in the 1970s mm. by the Russian Electrical Engineering Institute, this immense structure was initially built for testing lightning insulation on military aircraft. I thought somebody had gotten creative, maybe an artist or something, and built like some weird home or something like that. That's what it looked like. The generator, considered the world's largest, is part of a facility with several massive Tesla coils, some towering over 20 stories high. Together, these components formed what was nicknamed a lightning machine. The facility, including the Marx generator, was capable of creating artificial lightning of impressive magnitude. In fact, at its peak, the generator could discharge for 100 microseconds, matching the power of all generating facilities in Russia. After the fall of the Soviet Union, the facility fell into disuse and is now primarily inactive. It's only used occasionally for private sector testing. The last recorded use of the Marx generator was in August 2014. Even in its abandoned state, the site still captivates explorers and enthusiasts attracted by the immense scale and historical significance of the structure. Number 6. The Dead Road Transpolar Railway The Selekhar de Garka Railway, also known as the Dead Road, is a haunting relic of the Soviet era. This vast railway project was initiated in 1947 under Joseph Stalin's regime, with the goal of connecting the Arctic coal fields of the Soviet Union to central Russia. The construction began with two main labor forces, the 501st and 503rd labor camps, working from opposite ends towards the middle. The railway was intended to stretch over 806 miles, including ferry crossings over the Yob and Yenisei rivers. However, it faced numerous challenges right from the start. The initial plan to construct a port at Cape Kameny was quickly abandoned due to shallow waters, and the project was redirected towards linking Igarka and Selekhard. 
The working conditions on this project were inhumane and brutal. The majority of the labor force consisted of gulag prisoners, who were subjected to extreme weather conditions, with temperatures plummeting to negative 60 degrees Celsius in winter and swarms of mosquitoes and diseases in summer. The construction was plagued by technical difficulties, particularly the challenge of building on permafrost. Bridges and tracks frequently collapsed or were swallowed by the marshy terrain, and the lack of adequate machinery and materials further compounded these issues. Tragically, the human cost of this project was immense. Estimates suggest that between 80,000 and 120,000 laborers worked on the railway, and a significant number of them perished due to the harsh conditions and the demanding nature of the work. The exact number of deaths remains unknown, as no accurate records were kept. After Stalin died in 1953, the project was abruptly halted. By that time, approximately 698 kilometers of the railway had been completed, but the line was quickly rendered unusable due to structural failures and frost heaves. The corridor's telephone network, however, remained operational until 1976. So all those people who died constructing this thing pretty much just died for nothing with the way it, it just halted. Number 5. The Amber Room The Eighth Wonder of the World Many places claim to have this title, but many would agree that this belongs to the Amber Room. This room's story began in the early 18th century, commissioned by Frederick I of Prussia, and initially Jeez. intended for Charlottenburg Palace in Berlin. Renowned German Baroque sculptor Andreas Schluter and Danish amber craftsman Gottfried Wolfram were pivotal in its creation. Later, the room was gifted to Peter the Great of Russia in 1716, marking a peace alliance between Russia and Prussia. After its relocation to Russia, the Amber Room found its prestigious place in the Catherine Palace near St. Petersburg. Here, Italian designer Bartolomeo Francesco Rastrelli I know what y'all thinking, and a lot of other people probably have thought the same thing. And yet this place is still standing, and those who have probably acted upon it, they might not be around to tell about it. So, yeah, ain't nothing happening to this place, bro. It's probably heavily guarded. Security is probably top notch, top notch. Yeah, ain't nobody stealing nothing out of here, bro, at all. Expanded it, incorporating additional amber and creating a grander version. The room, a stunning example of craftsmanship, was constructed using six tons of amber and other semi-precious stones backed with gold leaf. During the Second World War, however, the German forces approached Leningrad, now known as St. Petersburg. Efforts were underway to dismantle and hide the room. Unfortunately, these attempts were in vain, as the fragile, dried-out amber made it impossible to move without damage. The German forces, recognizing the room's historical and cultural value, dismantled and transported it to Königsberg Castle in Germany. The room's ultimate fate remained shrouded in mystery. Some theories suggest it was destroyed in 1944, while others propose various locations where it might have been hidden or transported. Despite extensive searches and investigations, including theories of it being hidden in underground tunnels, shipped overseas, or sunk in a lagoon, the Amber Room has never been recovered. In 2003, a meticulously crafted replica of the Amber Room was unveiled at the Catherine Palace, marking 300 years of St. Petersburg. This replica is a tribute to the original Amber Room that we might never get to see. Number 4. Solovetsky Stones The Solovetsky Stones are a series of memorials that honor the victims of political repression in the Soviet Union. These monuments are significant both for their historical symbolism and their role in contemporary Russian society. The first Solovetsky Stone Monument was erected in Arkhangelsk region, northwest Russia, by a local society named Sovest. This initial memorial sparked a trend with many subsequent monuments across Russia following its simple and stark design, often using large rough-hewn boulders. Number 3. The Ice Maiden The Siberian Ice Maiden, unearthed in 1993 from the Pazirik burials in Russia's Altai Mountains, dates back to the 5th century BC. She represents a significant archaeological find due to her remarkably preserved state, including intricate tattoos. While initially believed to be a high-status individual like a princess, further research suggests she may have been a shaman in the Pazirik society, a culture known for its elaborate burials. Her tomb contained a solid wood coffin adorned with deer-themed leather appliques, 
The chamber housed two small wooden tables with tray-shaped tops for serving food and drink. Horse meat and mutton were placed on these tables alongside residues of a potential dairy product, possibly yogurt, found in a carved handled wooden vessel. A horn cup contained a beverage, providing sustenance for her journey. Her burial attire included a yellow silk blouse, a striped wool skirt with a tassel belt, and a towering headdress, necessitating an eight-foot-long coffin. The headdress, featuring a wooden substructure and gold-covered carved feline figures, stood nearly three feet tall. The Ice Maiden became a focal point of cultural identity for the local Altai people, who viewed her as a spiritual and ancestral figure leading to demands for her return. After being kept for research in Novosibirsk, she was eventually returned to the Altai in 2012. Kudos to the researchers for returning her to where she belongs. Number 2. Alien Corpse Found in a Nuclear Power Plant Take a look at these remains. What do you think it is? This is an alleged alien corpse discovered in a nuclear power plant in Russia. This peculiar finding characterized by a body with a mysterious skull, no neck, and wings, was found in Russia and has led to various theories about its origins. Initial expert opinion suggested it might have been a mutant chicken embryo, but further analysis indicated that the corpse did not match any known animal species on Earth. This ambiguity fueled speculation about extraterrestrial origins. The body was transported to the Institute of Biophysics in Krasnoyarsk for detailed examination where biologist Yegor Zadarev stated that extensive studies would be required to determine the creature's origins. Despite the scientific community's call for cautious analysis, some alien hunters and UFO enthusiasts, like Scott C. Waring of UFO Sightings Daily, are convinced of its extraterrestrial nature. Alien? Or just another bizarre mangled remains? Well, unfortunately, we're yet to discover the answer. And now See, it's well, most people will make the argument that it's a fetus of some type of animal or something like that. And it wasn't developed properly. Therefore, you see the elongated skull or deformed looking skull or whatever. And then the bone structure, the way it is and possibilities, they'll say that. But we'll probably never find out or at least they'll never tell us what they think this thing actually is. It's time for today's topic. But this camera captured in Russia shocked the whole world. It seems that it's pretty normal for Russia to be the center of alien conspiracies. Seems Just like look it. at this photo allegedly captured at a secret facility hidden in an isolated area in the Ural Mountains. But of course, like all conspiracies, the source and specifics of this photo can't be determined. Some believe that there's a Russian facility hidden from the public eye that conducts experiments on extraterrestrial creatures. How do they remain undercover? Many believe the organization actively erases and purges anything that might hint at their existence. And if believe photos that. do get out, well, it's easier to dismiss them as mere hoaxes. Number 1. Son of Mars Boris Kiprianovich is a young man from Volgograd, Russia. Or should I say, Mars. Boris, now in his 20s, has claimed since childhood that he lived on Mars before being reborn on Earth. His narrative includes vivid descriptions of Martian life and cataclysmic events on the Red Planet. He suggests that a nuclear war led to the destruction of life on Mars, with some survivors nuclear moving war. underground. Boris's parents have supported his extraordinary claims, noting his early ability to speak and his profound knowledge of the cosmos and alien civilizations, which he exhibited from a very young age. This knowledge, they assert, was not learned from external sources. He has spoken about the pyramids in Egypt, suggesting that there are hidden secrets within these ancient structures. One of his more specific claims is about a secret door behind the Sphinx's ear, which according to him, holds important revelations for humanity. He's also mentioned a connection between Martians and ancient Egyptians. Despite the fantastical nature of his story, Boris attracted attention from various people, including those in the field of UFOlogy and history. His detailed descriptions and the earnestness of his claims have been a source of conspiracies. Well, the last entry definitely piqued my interest. It seems... Who do, you, do you believe the kid? Do you believe him? Now, when he put this information out, right, if there was any documents behind the ear of the Sphinx, important things like that, you can rest assured they're not there now. They've either been stolen or they're, being, they're in some type of secure location where we're, we'll never be able to find them and verify anything that he's saying. So that's why I asked, do y'all think y'all believe the kid? 
is I don't think we'll ever know now. That stuff is probably gone. Only thing we'll probably be able to figure out. I don't know. I, I would think the Mars thing is we get some more people on Mars to be able to tell us if that was a possibility that that could have happened. Then we can look back to the kid and be like, you know what? He was right.